Hey, it's Kevin here with Hardscape Canada Training. Today I want to show you something a little different. We're going to look at the first phase of a hydroponics setup for a greenhouse. So we did some excavation, a couple test holes, figured out what was going on in there, found some existing clear crush and a perforated system underneath. So that was really uh, good news. So we got a bin dropped off and started excavating all of that organic soil. So we put the existing plants in pots and filled up the bin. There's just a little extra past that. And we built up in layers of three quarter inch clear crush and then geotech cloth and then our three quarter inch row base and started tying in our rebar. So we actually tied it in to the existing foundation and incorporated some new drains in the corners to get everything, everything ready for some concrete. So it was about two meters of concrete. We ended up having about a wheelbarrow left over. Uh, so I did a pretty accurate calculation, kind of worked out nice. I usually do it in square inches and then convert that into meters. Just seems to be the best way to go, uh, leaving about 0.2 extra. And you can see how we epoxied in our rebar and got those two sides set up. So the top of form on the right is set up to our level point. And then our snap line on the left there on the concrete is our sloping point. So that's set up with one inch of slope just to the outside and then two inches of slope down from the far corner to our drain point. So after it's screeded, start to level it off. And because it's pretty smooth finish, we're able to do pretty minimal slope. Still have a drain just for those odd times when this whole thing needs to be pressure washed out. So after it was roughly screeded, we're using a big float here and just smoothing it out as best we can, getting it all to the right height, first and foremost here. So just make sure we don't have any low spots, getting it pretty nice and smooth without working it too much. So really just setting our heights nicely, making sure that we pull it in one direction and then the other, so that it's a nice smooth, onto our all the way down to our lines. And usually pulls quite a bit of water up to the surface after a little while. And I like to do just a quick check with the finger, see how much you can press into it. You want it to bounce back a little bit before you actually start doing your final float and mag it all off as well. And we actually touched up the edges with an edging trowel too. So just got it nice and smooth. Waited about an hour and a half to two hours for it to sort of set up enough to do our final smooth finish on there. Then we checked out our drains. So we left it for the weekend, came back, took the tape off of the drains, hosed everything down, making sure the concrete got a little bit of water, actually helps it cure up, and checked our slopes, make sure everything drained really well to these outside corners where the drains sit. And from there, we tied in rebar to these pads after we stripped the forms and got ready for our center pour. So this one we actually mixed um, just with Navijack and Type 10 cement uh, with a little portable mixer. It was small enough, it only took about two hours to mix it all and place it. Uh, lots of water came up on this one. I think we mixed it just a little wetter than what we had coming off the truck. So we had to wait a good two, two and a half hours for it to sort of set up enough for us to finish it properly. And it's small enough that we were able to use mostly just a magnesium float here, a mag, to actually get a nice smooth surface. So our goal here is just to make a smooth surface that is sloped appropriately, that can be painted. So we're gonna have a specialty paint on here. It's gonna allow us to keep this greenhouse maintained properly and bring this whole thing together. Until the next phase, I'll see you then.